Welcome to Christ Gospel Church of St. Petersburg, Florida, where Bishop Preston D. H. Leonard is our international presiding bishop and Dr. Tony Young Jr. is our pastor. We are the church where everyone is welcome, where the Bible is the guide and the Holy Ghost is the director. We are delighted you decided to join us today and pray you will be richly blessed by the praise and worship and by the rhema word from the Lord. Please share this link with your family and friends as we prepare to go into our service. May God bless you. Praise the Lord, Christ Gospel Church family and friends. We are so blessed that you have decided to join us again for another virtual Bible study here at Christ Gospel Church. First, we will worship the Lord in song, after which we have a dynamic lesson just for you. You don't want to miss it. Again, we say thank you for joining us.
Good evening, saints. Thank you once again for joining us at Christ Gospel Church Virtual Bible Study. It's my pleasure to share with you once more. Last week we spoke on restoration. If you didn't, if you didn't participate, I get get the message. We are on YouTube. You need to get the message. It will bring comfort to your spirit. Hallelujah. God is speaking in this time and it's relevant to what's going on in the world today as the word of God is, as all scriptures is relevant to the times. Hallelujah. Today my topic, my topic will be rewards. Rewards. And I'm so excited to share it with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, in the mighty precious name of Jesus, we thank you for all that you have done and all that you're doing. And we thank you for that which you're about to do through this medium of Christ God's Church Virtual Bible Study. We thank you once more for our leaders. We thank you for our members, our brothers, sisters, and mothers in the faith. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have planned purpose to do within and through this ministry. We thank you for our audience, even now, all those under the sound of my voice. We thank you that none will leave the same way they came, but they'll be edified, they'll be encouraged, they'll be nurtured, and they will put their trust in you, the sovereign God, and in your Christ, and in the power of his resurrection. Precious Holy Spirit, I surrender all to thee. Take full control of this meeting. Let the words go forth in boldness, with character, to understanding, with love, with revelation, and with power. And let it manifest in lives being transformed, in souls being saved, healed, and restored unto the Lord, and the body being edified in the mighty precious name of Jesus. We thank you for miracles. We thank you for signs. We thank you for doing all that you have ordained. And we give you honor and glory and praise for your promises that are yea and amen in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen and amen. Thanks again, saints. It's a pleasure to be here once more to share with you. I truly hope you enjoyed last week. And now today we'll be looking at rewards. Rewards. You know, the scripture states that we are saved by grace through faith and it is not by works. It is a gift from God. So for a time, as a young believer, I was a little perplexed concerning works and the reward for works. I have been seeking the Lord as a young man for knowledge for revelation because if I'm saved by my faith and trust and confidence in God believing that Jesus is the Christ and he came down to earth from heaven that he laid down his life for my sins that God raised him from the dead and he ascended and I and is seated at the right hand of the majesty in heaven and that through him I know of eternal abundant life. So works, where does it come in? What is happening here? Well, glory be to God who grants the desires of hearts, who has given us the revelation in his word. I'm going to share with you concerning rewards and it is rewards for works. Amen? Now, remember, Romans chapter 10, verse 10. I want to get this out there. We are not saved by good works. Salvation is not by good works. Salvation is believing in our heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that he came down to earth from heaven, that he died by laying down his life. No one took it from him. He laid it down for God gave him the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. So God raised him from the dead on the third day. And we believe that he ascended back upon high and is now seated in the heavenly sanctuary at the right hand of God. 
So we believe and we confess it and that is how we are saved. And that salvation is eternal. Amen? But we are saved to do good works. Hallelujah. And so that is how the works came in. We're not safe to go and sit down. We're not safe to relax and do our own thing. We're safe to serve the one who loves us with an everlasting love. For knowing that he has loved us and has gave his life for us, that he has saved us, we in turn serve him out of love for him and all that he has done for us. Hallelujah. So as a believer, we are called to serve. We are called to do good works. My main text is Matthew chapter 25, verses chapters 14 to 40. And I'll be walking through this. And I, please be patient with me as I try to impart this to you as the Holy Spirit gives me utterance. Now, God rewards faithfulness. Those who bear fruit for God's kingdom, those who do not bear fruit, sorry, for God's kingdom, will not be treated the same as those who bear fruit. Let me say that again. Those, meaning believers, who do not bear fruit for God's kingdom will not be treated the same as believers who bear fruit. And you bear fruit by your works, your words and your actions. Amen? Jesus is coming back. We know and believe that. I will believe it and we know it. Whatever works for you, Jesus is coming back. And God expects us to use our time, our talents, our positions, our possessions diligently, faithfully serving him by ministering to others out of love. God, that is an expectation that God have for every believer. That we use all the resources that God has given us, has entrusted to us. It's not our own. Amen? We need to be good stewards over whatever resource God has given us. And to use it for the good of others and for the glory of his kingdom. Because there is a reward. The Lord has given each one of us gifts and talents. Every person, God, through Christ, has given us gifts and talents. That is the resources that are in accordance with our own abilities. No one, not one soul, is given more or less than they are able to use successfully God does not expect you to do something that you are not capable of doing so he equips you to do that which he wants you to do therefore you are capable to do what God calls you to do what God desires you to do what God wants what God wants you to do so failure comes not from a person's inability if we do not succeed in doing what God wants us to do, it's not because we do not have the ability to do it. To manage that which God has given us. But the scripture says that it comes from laziness. It comes from resentment. One translation says that it comes from hatred for God. Which means that we resent what God has called us and want us to do. We despise it. And in doing so, we despise God and his word. Amen? For God expects us to use well what he has given us. So the issue is not about the resources. It is not too much, nor is it too little. 
but it is how well and faithful we use it. Amen? Let us go to the book. I'm going to start verse 14 and I'm going to read from the King James. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 14. It states, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. This is Jesus speaking in a parable. Amen? He is using an a natural illustration to open up our eyes and our senses to how the kingdom of heaven operate. So he says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country and call his own servants and deliver unto them his goods. So the interpretation is that Jesus is the king of the kingdom. He's going away for a time. He'll be away, but he's going to come again. And, he's gonna, and he has entrusted us with resources to do work in the earth until he returns. That's the interpretation in a nutshell. It says, Unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Listen. To every man, according as his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So he has given us the resources, and he has gone back up to heaven. But we know that he's coming again. He says, verse 16, then he that had received the five talents went and traded the same and made other five talents. So he was given five and he used that resources, those gifts that he received and increased it a hundred percent by getting five more. So he did some work. He did some work. Whatever the work is, according to his ability and the resources that he had, he did some work and therefore increased his resources and gained a hundred percent more. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. So once more, based on the person's ability, his resources did not overwhelm him, neither were they too little, and he was able to use it productively, increasing it in the work of God's kingdom, not towards his own selfish needs and desires, but doing the work that was entrusted to him by Christ, using the resources well, being a good steward of it. Amen? But look what this, the scripture says. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Not his own, his Lord's. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So Christ is going to return and he's going to want us now to show what we have done with the time with the talents, with the gifts, with all the resources that he has given us. Jesus is talking about right here, all those who have received salvation. He's not talking about sinners. He's not talking about Edens. Get that in your mindset. He's talking about righteous people who are supposed to be in right standing with God, using the resources as God intends us to use, not sitting down. Amen? He's talking about going to church, serving others, whether in the church or out in the world. More so in the world than in the church because it is in the world that the harvest is. Amen? He's saying that did you or have you or are you using the resources that you have been given well? Are you being a good steward? So the Lord returned. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. So he came and showed the Lord the fruit of his labor. Amen. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. 
I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So, because of his good stewardship, he receives his reward. Amen? And it is a good reward. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord, Jesus, said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So you would believe that once you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are saved, you have received salvation, therefore you are going to enter into the joy of the Lord. But that is not what the scripture is saying here. That is why it is important to read to study, to know the word. Amen? Because after salvation, there comes work. Not work to save you. We are already saved by God's grace, which is a free gift. And all gifts have to be received for you to have it. So it's a gift and the choice to man, to all man, is to receive the gift or not to receive the gift. In receiving the gift, you receive salvation. In not receiving the gift, you don't have salvation. Those who receive the gifts are believers. Those who do not receive the gift are unbelievers. They do not believe God and his word, who is Christ, the Son of God. Simple as that. Amen? Now, verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not stewed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, look, see there. Eh. This is your own. That is what he said to the Lord. He brought back the one that he had received. He did nothing whatsoever. And said, you want this, take it. Now, will that servant be rewarded as those who has borne fruit? What does the scripture say? Verse 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not stewed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury, meaning with interest, more than that which you have received. You should have put the talent, the gift, the resource to work. Amen? It goes further. Here is his reward. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which had ten talents. So the one is taken away. That gift, that resource is taken away from that servant and it is given unto the one who has shown himself diligent. So he who had ten had received ten more. Now watch this. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. This is serious, saints. Remember, Jesus is speaking to believers, to those who have accepted him as Lord and Savior, but has not been obedient to his instruction, that has walked according unto the way that he has ordained, have not used the gifts and talents that he has bought with his blood and given unto us faithfully, have not been good steward. So here is this righteous man 
receiving condemnation. Because it says in verse 30, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. Now the scriptures cannot lie. The scripture cannot lie. So here, the believer, the one who have accepted Jesus, but has failed to follow his master's command to walk in obedience with his instructions, is cast out of his right standing into the outer darkness. What is out there? Listen. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. Where is there going to be weeping and gashing of teeth? In the assembly of the unbelievers. So it's cast out into the assembly of the unbelievers because he lacked due diligence. Amen. It says in verse 32, 31, And when the Son of Man, who is the Son of Man? Jesus, our Christ, shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all the nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. He shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. Wanted to pay attention here. I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger. And you took me in. I was naked. And you clothed me. I was sick. And he visited me. I was in prison. And you came unto me. Now all these things. Are simple things. That each of us can do. That we don't need to be wealthy. To be educated. To be very intelligent. In order to do. He is being cast out of his right standing because he failed to do simply kindness, caring for others. It says, I was hungry and you gave me no meat. Feeding the hunger, giving bread to somebody in need. A believer who God has saved and given gifts and talents fail to care. For another. I was thirsty. You gave me no drink. I was a stranger. And you and you took me not in. So you only, you only business with your family. My mother, my father, my sister, my brother. We four no more. But that is not how the kingdom of God operates. I was naked. And you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. You don't need spiritual gifts to do this. You don't need to be a preacher, apostle. You don't need to be a healer. So there is no excuse for being kind and generous, for reaching out to others. This is what God has called us to do. Remember Paul said we are not all apostles, we are not all prophets. But Christ has called all of us to love and care for the needy, for mankind, for our brothers and sisters, thereby demonstrating his love in us. So we demonstrate Christ and cause others to come to him. Jesus used all that the Father gave him in order to achieve his goal, that is a harvest of souls. Of sons. God is a businessman. Did you know that? God is an investor. God invested in his son by giving his one, his only begotten, unique son. 
in order to reap a harvest of many sons, you and I. And Jesus used all that God gave him in order to bring in the harvest, to bring salvation to you and I, to that he laid down his very life. And so now we who come to Christ, who come into that grace and receive that great gift of salvation, God intends us to work, to manifest his love and his goodness in the earth, to seek those who are lost, to share a word, a kind word, to be a friend to one who seems friendless. Many times, if as believers you are reaching out to those on the fringe, those on the line, those who are outside looking in, we draw more souls to Christ. Even some who are in among us who are weak, if we're there for them, at times when they are being drawn away, we would be that rock that they can call upon, that they can stand upon. We'll be seen with divine eyes to say, no, don't go there. No, that relationship might be toxic. That is not the way of the kingdom. We could encourage them softly, strongly, using whatever it takes to help to keep them in line. We share the resources that God bless us with. Feeding the hungry. Giving to those who are thirsty. Thirsting for the word of God. That is what the thirsty is. Hungry for the word of God. It's not just natural food. But natural food is a part because these are simple things. Will you lose your salvation for not clothing somebody who is naked? Not being judgmental to say they, they are the cause of their own demise? We are not called to judge. We are called to bless, to be a blessing, to share. Hallelujah. And here... Jesus is showing us that there is a reward. But what I want to reveal to you is that there is a reward in doing and there is a reward in not doing. In doing you get more. To him that have more will be given. In not doing even what you have, your salvation will be taken away from you. Because God is a just God. And those who do not bear fruit will not be treated the same as those who bear fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The one who was unfruitful was not willing to do his master's will. He was thinking only of himself. When we obey willingly, doing what God has called us to do, we demonstrate love for our master and a heart for his work and his kingdom. Not, not just by lip service, not just by singing and clapping out and in church. That is good. There's a time and a place for that. But what do we do when we leave church? What do we do when we see our brothers and sisters in need and we are able to reach out to them, whether directly or indirectly, but we become an influence in their life to manifest the love of God. Hallelujah! Our fruit, that is, the word we speak, the way we speak, our act, our actions, these are true evidence of our love for God and man. It shows how we think and respond to Jesus' message concerning the hungry, the homeless, the sick, it separates this simple action, separate the true followers of Christ from pretenders and unbelievers. Not me say it, it's Jesus said. Just this simple, basic, natural act that every human being can do and should do 
separates us who love God and believe in him and trust in him from those who don't love him. By your fruit. Or you treat others. Do you love who you can see? Or then can you pretend to love him who you cannot see? Hallelujah. Jesus is teaching us the acts and the actions we can do every day that does not depend on wealth, on any special abilities. It doesn't depend on our level of education or our intel intelligence or our intellect. These are common things freely given and freely received. Personally, involved in helping those in need. In other words, it is simple caring for others. Caring for others. Saints, we have a responsibility to use what God has given us through Christ diligently as good stewards for the good of others and for the glory of God. For there is a reward. Hallelujah. The more we do and walk in obedience to God's will is the more God is going to pour into us is the more he's going to reward us. If we are not diligent and we fail through laziness, through disobedience, which is rebellion, if we focus on ourselves and not on God and his kingdom and the work that he has called us to do in the earth, we will lose our reward and be cast out into the outer darkness. Hallelujah. So there is reward in serving. There is reward in ministering to others. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 to 30. Let's go there. Let's go there. I'm just giving you the word. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm about through. Verse 27 to 30. And the scripture says, Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God had set in the church first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Paul goes on to say in verse 29, Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracle? Of all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gift. And yet I show you a more excellent way. What is that more excellent way? It's all of chapter 13. It's love. That is the best gift. And that is what God has called us to demonstrate to the world. That is the light that shines in darkness. The love for God and the love for man. And we demonstrate our love for God who we cannot see by loving and serving man whom we can see. So believers, there is work for every member of the body. You don't have to be a preacher. Paul is telling us we are not all preachers. You don't have to be a prophet. We are not all prophets. But Jesus says we can all manifest his love in serving others. In the simple things. Feeding the hungry. Clothing the naked. Giving the thirst something to drink. Ministering unto the homeless. You might not have somewhere to put them, but you could use your resource of who you know. 
to provide them some comfort, some wear, some all. Hallelujah. It's called doing good works. It's called being diligent. It's called manifesting Christ who is in us through our words and our actions to our brothers and sisters, to the world that makes a difference. And there is a reward. For we, as believers, do not serve God for nothing. Hallelujah. Remember, salvation, free gift. Believe it and receive it. But in serving, there is a reward. In closing, I want to go to Revelation. The last book, the last chapter in the Bible. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. And Jesus is speaking. And he says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not according as his salvation. According as his work shall be. Every man. God is no respect of person. So Jesus is coming. He's coming quickly. He's coming soon. And his reward is with him. And remember, if you do good, if you are diligent with the resources, you receive a blessed reward. If you are unbelieving, lazy, rebellious, disobedient, you receive a reward. But it's not going to be one that you like. It's taking away that which you have. And what you have? Salvation. And chewing you out into outer darkness. Which means you are shut out from the kingdom of God and his Christ. Not me say so. That is not what elders say. That is what the word says. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I trust you have received something from this word that will bring a transformation into your walk with Christ. Because this entire chapter of Matthew 25 is speaking to believers, to us who confess Jesus Christ as Lord. It's speaking to you, it's speaking to me. And he's saying, be a good steward of God's resource that he has entrusted you with. The life he has given you, the time that he has given you, the gifts and the talents and the resources, both natural and supernatural, that he has entrusted us with for the good of man, and for the glory of God and his kingdom. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the unction and the inspiration of your Holy Spirit to bring forth this word in this time and in this season. I thank you for your power. For your word return not unto you void, but it is even now prospering in that for which it is sent and accomplishing that which you please, prospering in the lives of believers who are hearers and doers of your word. So I thank you for the transformation in the life of believers that we become due good stewards, practicing due diligence over the resources that you have given us, rendering service unto man as unto Christ that you the sovereign God be glorified that Jesus the Christ our risen Lord be lifted up from this earth in praise and thanksgiving and so men 
or drawn unto him in ever increasing abundance. For it is thy will, O Lord, that no man perish, but all come to the knowledge of the truth. Touch every heart that we be servants, not only unto you, the sovereign God, but unto man, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is blessed forever and ever. Amen and amen. Be blessed in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.